Hey everyone! So, first things first, before we get started, I gotta say thank you for making my past few videos such a success. I really appreciate it, and now 20,000 subscribers is literally less than 1,000 away. It's unbelievable. But thanks to all your viewership, the bar gets to stay open a little bit longer. But extending my gratitude isn't the only reason why I'm opening up shop today. We're gonna do two things, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna try to touch upon the timeline and flesh it out a little bit, because Aizawa's presence in the story helps us understand the timeline just a little bit more in My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Also, for the new viewers, I'm going to be recapping one of my favorite moments to ever happen in Vigilantes, and along with that, I'll be introducing a theory that involves our favorite Erasure hero as well. But that's as spoilery as I'm going to get for now. If you're not caught up on Vigilantes, I suggest you read it on Viz and then head on back, because this video is going to contain spoilers from Chapter 2 onward. So before we get started today, remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And when you hit the bell, make sure to change your notifications from personalized to all. That way you never miss a premiere here on the channel. And if you're in the premiere right now, what's going on everyone? Let's do this. Make sure you got your drink and uh, let's head inside, shall we? Welcome to the bar, folks. Okay, so like I said in the intro, we're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna talk about chapter two and its significance in the story, and along the way, we're gonna theorize possibly that a rematch might occur between Knuckle Duster and Eraserhead. You see, chapter 97 of My Hero Academia Vigilantes left us with a pretty intense cliffhanger, as now Koichi is staring down the Erasure hero himself. So let's head over to the wall, break down some theories, and I'll go over how Koichi and the Vigilantes cross paths with our boy Aizawa for the very first time. Alright, so Chapter 2 of My Hero Academia Vigilantes has our cast of characters hunting down the distribution of the drug that we know is Trigger. We learn later on in Vigilantes that Trigger was created by All for One to enhance somebody's quirk, but also at the same time causes their inhibitions to fall, making them susceptible to random acts of violence. So in this particular chapter, Knuckle Duster is going around cornering anyone who looks relatively suspicious. That's when the gang of vigilantes come across a well-dressed man that kind of resembles this dude from Deadpool that gave Deadpool the opportunity to get his healing abilities. That's when Knuckle Duster gets a little too handsy. Now, we'll find out later on in Chapter 2 that his intuition was completely correct. The guy Mario is indeed a trigger dealer, and he's provided trigger to the Naruhata boys. You know, the guys that are currently one of Koichi's biggest allies. So when Knuckle Duster goes in to punch Mario in the face during his Batman-esque interrogation, a certain hero's capture tape wraps around his arm. And the reveal that we get is that since graduating from UA High, Eraserhead chose Naruhata to be his stomping grounds. Now, a quick little backstory on Naruhata. On several different occasions, people have stated that the heroes tend to ignore Naruhata. And because of that neglection, this town has become a safe haven for people like villains to hang out. But also, it gives them the impunity to walk around without persecution whatsoever. Now, Eraserhead is there to counteract this, as his specialty, we all know, is battle. So, even though today is his day off, it looks like he's gonna need to apprehend Knuckle Duster. And what ensues is a fight that is rather abrupt, but hopefully is acting as a precursor to something that we totally want to see in the future. But pretty much, we see that Eraserhead is a very competent battle hero, and while his style kind of relies on not taking hits and being more agile, Knuckle Duster is a brawler. His style is to stand his ground and know that he can take your hit and keep on moving. Instinctually during the fight, Eraserhead assumes that Knuckle Duster has a quirk, but when nothing changes after he uses his quirk except the fact that he gets repelled by Knuckle Duster, the realization sets in for Eraserhead. This old dude is quirkless. Essentially, that's why the fight just ends abruptly between them. And honestly, this is the first time that we really see the escalation of force for heroes be enacted. Heroes are only allowed to act when there's a villain that needs to be apprehended, or simply there's just improper usage of quirk being done. Since Knuckle Duster doesn't have a quirk, technically, Eraserhead is in the wrong, so he has to stop immediately. This is where the fine line between heroes and police come into understanding. He can't do anything, and later in the chapter, when everybody is triggered out, he can absolutely do something. Now, this is where my theory kinda comes into play. At the end of chapter 97, Koichi is hiding in a dark alley, and before he has the chance to head back to the hospital and get back to Pop Step, he's cornered by Eraserhead. So I personally think that this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. 
Knuckle Duster's return in the rematch between the two 96 chapters later. The return of Knuckle Duster has been amped up for the past few months, and over the past five chapters, we've had small little hints of his return, whether it be him planting the cat bus in Koichi's apartment, or him breaking in and grabbing his bandana and dusters. Now, one of the main reasons why I'm saying that he might return is because the first time he came to Koichi's aid was in the same type of alleyway. Koichi has been on the run all day, and there's no way he's going to be able to keep up with the racer head at 100% at this point. This isn't a racer head with one leg and one eye. This is full strength Aizawa, ready to bang out. And look, if we're talking about a fight between Aizawa and Koichi, Koichi's quirk is an emitter based quirk, which means that a racer head is his immediate counter. Mutant quirks like Octoids or Kamiyans counter him immensely, but my train of thought is leading me towards another theory. What if Eraserhead works to help Koichi out of this shit show? Now, technically this theory would take Knuckle Duster out of the situation, but at the same time, if you have Eraserhead on your side, you can finally catch number six. As number six quirk is also very much emitter based. Whether it's his exploding arms or overclock, Eraserhead is an ex machina for both titles at this point. He straight up locked down Shigaraki, and now he should technically be able to lock down number six as well. And this theory kind of relies on him seeing Koichi and being like, look crawler, if you're gonna continue to do this, you have to lay low. I know why you're doing this, but if we are gonna do this right, we're gonna do it right. And from there, the final arc of Vigilantes has to be some of our favorite heroes teaming up to take down number six. I mean, when you think about it, Aizawa was pivotal in that fight with Deku and Shigaraki, so maybe he might assist in the same kind of way. And one of my reasons why I think that it's possible that Eraserhead will assist Koichi instead of apprehending him is something that I referenced before. Koichi threw himself in front of a villain for Eraserhead's well-being, so he knows that he's a good guy. They have a past together, and Koichi honestly inspires him to go out and be a teacher. But we also know that Aizawa is the type of dude that doesn't like to owe anybody anything. And this kind of leads me to believe that it's definitely a possibility that he actually aids Koichi, and halfway through the next chapter, they end up back at the Hotter Bros Cafe. Now, I know some people are like, Dan, in chapter two, Eraserhead literally says apprehending villains is the sole job of a hero and heroes alone. And I'd counter that by saying, and later in the same chapter, Knuckle Duster lays it down to him and says that they do things to prevent people like these guys from becoming a huge problem. And he's absolutely right. After this incident, those three boys begin to slowly walk the path of redemption. I mean, Soga's a vigilante now and one of Koichi's biggest allies. Chapter 2 alone has so many crucial and beautiful scenes that just define vigilantes in so many different ways. I mean, from Aizawa learning the true essence of what it means to be a vigilante, to Koichi's very first flight. I mean, this is the chapter that gives us Koichi's dream to fly. Even the narration is beautiful. Also, sidebar real quick, how ridiculous would would it be if this narration is him telling Deku how he became a vigilante? That would be insane. Anyway, I think chapter two sets the tone for the entire series, and in a way gives us a glimpse into who Eraserhead was before he even had thoughts of being a teacher. But the one thing that his presence in the story does for us, and yes, it's time, the timeline. I know, this is probably the hottest topic of the comments section. Well, look, as of chapter 97, using that idea that the vigilante story is happening five years prior to our main story, we now have some concrete information that we can go over. And that concrete information revolves around Eraserhead himself, mostly that now he's a teacher at UA and he doesn't have that scar under his eye from the USJ invasion. Those two facts tell us several things. One could be that right now the series is taking place during Deku's American Dream Plan. You see, Deku starts training to obtain One For All in his final year of middle school. And the American Dream Plan consists of 10 months of intensive training, which means as a vigilante's happening, Deku could be super soft at this point and likely about to get busted by All Might for overworking himself. As for the five year backstory assumption, My Hero Academia stated that All Might's injury happened five years ago, and that's literally the only metric that we have for vigilantes taking place. And we have to take this all into consideration because we know that All Might sustained the injury, has the time limit, and has no Sir Night Eye, and Night Eye only walks away when he wants All Might to retire. And we all know that only happens after the injury. So with that being said, My Hero Academia has elapsed one full year inside of its own canon. 
which mean that the first year of Deku being at UA could coincide with Koichi's story being wrapped up, and it's only one year later that he's forced to don the hoodie once again. So yeah, I feel like Eraserhead is a great walking timeline measurement. We're all scrambling to figure out whether or not Koichi will debut in the coming weeks. But if that were to happen, I'd imagine Vigilantes is getting ready to wrap up, and what a sad moment that'll be, but having him in the main story would absolutely make my day. As for Eraserhead and Knuckle Duster facing off, I mean, the scene is definitely set for our main man's comeback, and now that people are starting to make their triumphant returns, it's only about time we get our Batman back. And if that doesn't pan out, I would totally be cool with Eraserhead coming to Koichi's aid as well. He's one hell of an asset to have in a battle with someone with an emitter quirk. And in more ways than one, he could help Koichi apprehend his arch nemesis finally. But if you have any ideas as to what's going to happen in that dark alleyway, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you're expecting Aizawa's help or Knuckle Duster's return. I'm totally going to be Team Duster and always will be. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button. Let's go for another 500. But for now, I gotta get out of here. Onward to 20k. Cheers.